Just about three years ago, I approached one of our vice presidents at the university to, to inquire about the possibility of a, of a WIC public art space um, here on this esplanade, which had not been built at the time, but was uh, in, the, in the planning stages. And it turned out that uh, there was a lot of interest in locating the WIC Poetry Center, some kind of presence of the WIC Poetry Center on this esplanade, which is physically a bridge between our campus and our town, between the town and the gown. In part of their clearing of the space for the esplanade, they had to purchase a house, which they learned was the house of the first faculty member at Kent State, a woman named Mae Prentice, who taught at the Kent State Normal School in 1912. And when they found out the significance of this house, instead of demolishing it, they had a big push to hold that history, to preserve that history. And it was presented to me shortly after beginning conversations with the upper administration about a small poetry park at the time. What if we also could move into a house and then create uh, a classroom in the lower foundation of that house so that we could, be, we could become a point of destination. We could serve a lot of our programming in our own location. We had a, a gifted interior designer. We had a very gifted project manager, Brian Pickering, to renovate the house in such a way in which it feels still like uh, a home. And it's a home. It's a home for poetry. It's the home of the Wick Poetry Center. It has original sliding wooden pocket doors, you know, that close off a reading room, um, the, the Joe Woodward reading room. We have a third floor loft space in the house called the Poets Loft, which is a beautiful room for uh, quiet reflection, for writing, uh, and for, for meeting, for quiet meetings. We also have this very modern and high tech lower level, we call it, which is this new foundation built before they lowered the house down into its present location. And that is a community classroom. We, we were able to succeed in our vision in putting together this poetry park with with an outdoor gallery of changeable poetry poster exhibits uh, from our traveling stanza community project, and with an amphitheater, uh, with Bob's sculpture, Seated Earth, um, and it's a, it's, it's a lovely space now for quiet reflection, for performances and talks in the amphitheater, for receptions. It's meant to be a very inclusive space and a shared space for creative gathering. I'm particularly uh, pleased with the, the, the chance to, to feature one of Bob's sculptures in the park, partly because of, of, of the, the aesthetic and the philosophy behind his sculpture, Seated Earth. And it has live plants, a, a Japanese maple growing out of, out of the shoulder. And, and it has ferns and plants growing out of the arms of Seated Earth. And it has two benches uh, built into the sculpture so that Already we've seen kids and, and older folks too come and actually sit down under the arms of Seated Earth and, and come up to the sculpture and sort of engage with it, not like you would at a museum and keep a distance from it, but hands on, touch it and sit in the arms of Seated Earth. So I think the, the, it's always been that I've been inspired by Bob Wick's aesthetic and how it resonates, I think, with what I think is the value of our program and how it impacts uh, people I've seen of all ages, from five-year-olds to 95-year-olds.